our war with Tiberistan is over for all intents and purposes. Um, where is Sweden's truce is up in 1634. Um, yeah, I think Sweden is our next target again. So let's send our armies up to uh, Usma and Uh, Vipuri. Speaking of which, all right, all of their land is converted, so uh, we don't we won't have to whenever we finally annex them. Sue for peace with Tiberistan, and we'll take take land. How much money can I get from them? A little bit. Uh, can I get any trade centers in this war? I don't think so. Samarkand is right there. Doesn't look like it. So probably just take high development. I'm not afraid of the coalition that might form. All it is is the crap Ottomans and everyone else I've pissed off over the years. Um, that's 64% overextension. I'm at zero right now, so. Oh wait, that's going further south than I want to. I don't want either of those. Uh, yeah, I'm not too concerned with taking land in Kashmir, but, um, Samarkand, I am. So... That's still there. Everything other than just those two, Maimana and Balk, are in the realm of possibilities. Don't really want, want to go into Persia right now either. Don't see that happening.
Uh, that's a pretty large one. You know what? Let's poke the bear. The proverbial bear, because let's be honest, Russia doesn't exist anymore. We are Russia. We are the bear. Oh, and that satisfies my mission, too. I tend to forget about my missions a lot. I need to reduce overextension. Yeah, sure, we'll go with that. Can I core all of this right now? Looks like it. Alright. Um... We will... Nope, I guess we didn't pick up any forts. Everyone's going to where I told them to. Good. I need 30 for the next claim on Sweden. And I'm going to annex Finland. Getting our loans paid off finally. Um, can I do anything with the estates? Like, uh, can't seek the support of the clergy until three more years. I can demand administrative support. Why not? Um, I'll ask for money from the burgers too, which I can then turn around and give to the clergy. Sure. New settlement, base tax in Saratov. Or no. Stanovoy. Saratov is different. Don't ask me how I saw one when uh, it was the other. And it's 25 for the Bavarian claim, the next one. Yeah. development five seven okay we can't claim any of those right now I'll claim one of them though not sure which one probably the 16 that I saw one of the 16s or there is only one 16 Gain manpower. We don't need it. That's not in it. Like, Gearing is not a trade company, is it? No. Just Beijing is the furthest one north. Um, gain power of every type. And let's fabricate a third claim on Sweden. Wait, there's a 17? And we can't claim it though. Uh, 
Flash or go with one of the sevens, I guess. And we'll stop building Spy Network, uh, Spy Network in Sweden. thinking should I take the merchant from Kiev but I don't think I want to do that because I do want it to go to Novgorod because the merchant from the merchant in or our power in Krakow is not as high as I thought it would be at this point in the game um can take that I can take uh, military attack. 18 was it? 19. Um. Let's fabricate on one of the other 16s. And call the diplomat back. Who's Denmark allied with? Nobody. Might as well uh, fabricate a claim on. Scotland. Or, I wonder if I can do something actually. We'll see. Might be worth it. Uh, colony? Gaining 50 gold a month. Lost another general. And I th think we're not going to be able to explore very well anymore because it, I think everything down here has effectively westernized. Meaning that. Actually. Aragon. No will not share their maps. I don't know. I'm okay with disbanding this army. Chances are we're not going to get any uh, events for uh, the Seven Cities at this point. And um, I really don't want to micromanage the guy always Stopping and starting again. I'd really like to see Florida uh, break free from Brittany. They've got 32% uh, liberty desire. We renewed a loan. There we go. Uh, in 1572, the Yagelian dynasty was extinct, and a new king was to uh, was to elected. His name was Henry de Anjou. On his election, he was forced to sign 
what was later what has later been called the Henrikian Articles, which rectified that Poland was an elective monarchy from then on. He also signed the Pact Conventa, which for, was a formal contract between the elected monarch and the same. Uh, in practice, the monarch lost all power over his country. He had no power over governmental officials, and he had a mere 3,000 men strong royal army. To get uh, anything extra, he had to plead with the same for permission. At this moment, Poland effectively stopped being a monarchy as the monarch was a mere figurehead and instead a true noble republic. Uh, we gained some crap uh, modifiers. Probably should have uh, reduced inflation already, but no, not thinking ahead. Um, to possible events that could have fired. But now that was the event that gives us the power to uh, abolish the same, because now the other events can fire. And that is actually a pretty good uh, monarch. Or a pretty good heir, I should say. Um, right, uh, forming royal marriages. Not going to get one with Finland, but I will get one with Byzantium. And with Bohemia. Burgundy and Aragon. The same comply with your policies. Um... The veto itself was merely the most obvious sim symptom of a political disease that went far deeper. The first veto was not repeated for 17 years, the second not for another 10. Then it became uh, endemic in parliamentary life. The right to cast a veto grew into fetish, particularly among the minor slakta who saw it as a symbol of their personal involvement in the commonwealth, as well as the ultimate guarantee of their freedoms. That the king viewed it differently is obvious. One should know that policy making in Poland was not frozen because of the power of the veto. The king had to create grand promises, uh, compromises to ensure at least an at least acceptable outcome. However, as Poland society, uh, Polish society slowly lost its consensus, it was harder and harder to t to reach a compromise. It was especially cumbersome when planning and scheming had been going on for many months, and suddenly, in the last minute of passing the proposal in the same. Someone rose and threw a veto. Then again, sometimes the proposal actually passed. Uh, and until the death of our ruler, we gain tech cost minus 10%, idea cost minus 10%, and yearly uh, inflation reduction minus, uh, plus 10. Wait a minute. Ooh, that air just got even better with well connected. And that sets up all of our royal marriages again, I think. Aside from with Finland. Okay. And... We're close to being able to pay back another loan. But I want, or uh, this, I will pray for the best. Uh, Stanovoy has changed to fur producing. Um, conversion successful.
I want to see something. And no. Nothing new that I can reduce autonomy on. Now the question becomes, do I want to declare the war uh, that the war with Sweden because we're we might at any time start a war to uh, a war with the nobility and that pretty much triggers a it's not an official disaster but I think it's roughly has a lot of similar events to a disaster another conversion That lasts for another year. Oh, I didn't even consider that. So we're probably going to have to renew that. Let's go ahead and develop a little bit more to keep our military power from going too far over good cores are finishing and in June all of our cores will be finished to go ahead and fabricate the claim on Gotland. We'll go ahead and pay that second to last loan. Call the diplomat there. And go to war with Denmark before Sweden. I mean, I could probably do both at the same time. But... Um, let's not do that. We've reduced overextension. No, I don't want a royal marriage from Finland. Uh, colonize Jugger. Sure. When we get the chance, we'll do that. But I need to wait on this one to finish first, so not going to happen right now. guys on a boat oh there's a there's a fort there why did I think there wouldn't be one um Sure, might as well call Bohemia to arms. And because Bohemia is the emperor, I should be able to move these guys in now. Yeah.
increase our uh, ally and subject opinions of us, because we probably need them. A little bit, at least. Byzantium will be fine forever, but... Might as well do that while this war is going. Uh, unhappiness among the artisans. Lose stability or lose a ton of money. I'll take out a loan to save myself from losing stability. Um, where's the port there? It's on the other side. Let's go do that then. And that siege is already over. I'm going to stay here. Or... Or, I'm going to go over there and pick up 10 troops and take them to siege down uh, Denmark's other holding. Wait a minute. Oh, they also have stuff up in... Never mind. We'll just keep them there. Yep, stay there. Uh, I figured that calling Bohemia in would be uh, easier than uh, just asking for everyone all through uh, throughout the emperor empire for uh, military access, and I had to go check my military access with other nations for a second because I thought I got military access through someone else, uh, specifically Persia, for my war with Tiberistan. Uh, we'll protect the independence of the church. And there's the event. Uh, in the 17th century, Poland was one of the mightiest countries in, uh, in the world, yet... Um, she had great problems. The trade and production of Eastern Europe were based along the Baltic coast. There laid the uh, future of the next major power in the area. The king saw this and tried to improve Polish position in these areas, but the Slokta were not remotely interested. Her interest laid in the Ukraine and the lands where the magnates could rule uh, armies of serfs levied from their vast agricultural estates. This was the first disagreement between King Sigismund III and the nobility. Another one was the matter of the religious freedom. Uh, the king never stopped working towards making a, the Catholic faith the official religion in the country. However, he was quite unsuccessful. The last disagreement was about royal power. Sigis Sigismund was the grandson of the strong Swedish king Gustavus Vasa, and he desired absolutism. Sigismund fought an uneven fight, but his struggle irritated the Poles so much that his reputation is tarnished to this very day. He also managed to upset people with his undiplomatic efforts to increase his power, and because of that, the uh, Zebrz... Zeb... Zebrzdowski uh, rebellion stopped his effort for good. Resign completely and read theological books instead. We, get, we change to an oligarchic republic. Or we wage a war on the nobility. I'll wait till the end of the month. Um... I really like, uh, oh wait, 
Regency Council 000 with a strong claim becomes ruler. I don't know how long that Regency Council lasts. We'll wage a war on the nobility though. And now we have to deal with this rebellion. But I'm going to increase my tech first. Luckily I have armies in Poland still. Well, actually, I mean I do, but uh, they're kind of spread out. So, anyway, we're going to deal with this new uh, event in the next episode.